Earth has changed a lot since its beginning due to natural causes. Add human interference to that and the Earth will be completely different from now in few billion years. In Earth's history before the Industrial Revolution, Earth's climate changed due to natural causes not related to human activity. These natural causes are still in play today. Two major volcanic eruptions in 1982 and in 1991 pumped sulfur dioxide gas high into the atmosphere. The gas was converted into tiny particles that lingered for more than a year, reflecting sunlight and shading Earth's surface. As a result, temperatures across the globe dipped for two to three years. Although volcanoes are active around the world and continue to emit carbon dioxide as they did in the past, the amount of carbon dioxide they release is extremely small compared to human emissions. On average, volcanoes emit between 130 to 230 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. By burning fossil fuels, people release in excess of 100 times more, about 26 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. As a result, human activity overshadows any contribution volcanoes may have made to recent global warming. Glaciers have shrunk, ice on rivers and lakes is breaking up earlier, plant and animal ranges have shifted, and trees are flowering sooner. Effects that scientists had predicted in the past would result from global climate change are now occurring. Loss of sea ice, accelerated sea level rise, and longer, more intense heat waves. The planet will continue to undergo glacial periods. These periods are caused by eccentricity, axial tilt, and precision of the Earth's orbit. As part of the ongoing supercontinent cycle, plate tectonics will probably result in a supercontinent in 250 to 350 million years. The luminosity of the Sun will steadily increase, resulting in a rise in the solar radiation reaching the Earth. This will cause a higher rate of weathering of silicate minerals, which will cause a decrease in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In about 600 million years from now, the level of CO2 will fall below the level needed to sustain C3 carbon fixation photosynthesis used by trees. Some plants use the C4 carbon fixation method, allowing them to persist at CO2 concentration as low as 10 parts per million. However, the long-term trend is for plant life to die off altogether. The extinction of plants will be the demise of almost all animal life, since plants are the base of the food chain on Earth. In about 1.1 billion years, the solar luminosity will be 10% higher than at present. This will cause the atmosphere to become a moist greenhouse, resulting in a runaway evaporation of the oceans. As a likely consequence, plate tectonics will come to an end, and with them, the entire carbon cycle. Following this event, the planet's magnetic dynamo may come to an end, causing the magnetosphere to decay and leading to an accelerated loss of volatiles from the outer atmosphere. 4 billion years from now, the increase in the Earth's surface temperature will cause a runaway greenhouse effect. The axial tilt of the Earth may begin to undergo chaotic variations with changes in the axial tilt of up to 90 degrees. By that point, most if not all the life on the surface will be extinct. The most probable fate of the planet is absorption by the Sun in about 7.5 billion years. After the Sun has entered the red giant phase and expanded to cross the planet's current orbit, a long shot exists for life to survive Earth's fate. But it would involve some novel solutions or a serious space colonization effort. Scientists propose capturing a passing asteroid and using its gravitational effect to nudge Earth's orbit outward. A continuous asteroid passage every 6,000 years or so could keep Earth at a comfortable distance and give life another 5 billion years on the planet. Humans may find new homes among the asteroid belt, the outer planets, in artificial colonies, or perhaps beyond this star system. The Sun will eventually lose most of its mass as it becomes a white dwarf and could come to resemble other burnt out star systems. About 1 to 3 percent of white dwarf stars seem to contain dust and rocky debris, which may represent remnants of rocky planets such as Earth. By that time, humanity should have either found its new foothold in the universe or long since ceased to exist. Your sharing of this video is much appreciated. Give this video a thumbs up and put all your questions and suggestions in the comment section. Make sure you follow us on all other social media and subscribe for more weekly science videos and interesting maths tricks.